What's going on, you two? Nearly Audi's entire sedan lineup has gone under the knife this year. And today, we have the latest to show up on our shores, the all-new 2019 Audi A6. This is Audi's midsize offering with a lot of the sporty demeanor from the A4 and the extreme opulence from the A8. Of course, we want to give a special thanks to Audi of Lexington for providing us with this really nice A6. And if you're in the market for any new Audi, be sure to stop by their dealership or visit their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with all that said, let's see if the A6 is the Goldilocks Audi sedan. So like always, we'll start out here on the outside, where the A6 has a pleasing blend of all the latest Audi styling elements. Compared to the A8 we reviewed last month, the A6 has a more chiseled and athletic looking face, with your chrome single frame grille dominating the center, and a grey accent at the bottom to frame things in. Now the one thing that changes between the models are these headlights. The shape itself stays the same, but the premium has the basic LED design, this premium plus has the upgraded matrix design, and then the prestige comes with the full matrix headlights, complete with dynamic turn signals and the entry and exit animations. However, the side and back is where that Goldilocks effect really starts to come into play. Obviously, this does fall between the A4 and A8 lengthwise, but more importantly, it blends the best styling attributes of both. This is able to capture most of the elegance from the A8, but all the while having a more dynamic design with body lines from the A4 and widened rear haunches. The tail lights are closer in design to a traditional Audi, and you've got a chrome accent that connects and runs through them. They of course are fully LED with the dynamic turn signal. Finally, at the bottom, you've got more convincing fake exhaust pipes than what you find in the A7 and A8. Overall, the A6 is a very handsome sedan that strikes a good balance between being too stately and too in your face. Now moving on to the wheels, you've got really nice ones no matter which model you choose. 19 inch alloys are always standard but we have the optional bi-color 20-inch bespoke alloys that come with the sport suspension in the sport package. Other than those, there is one more option, an outrageously large 21-inch alloy, optional on the Prestige only. And then checking out the mirrors, they are always heated and auto-dimming, though you do need at least the premium plus for blind spot monitoring with rear cross-traffic alert and rear auto braking. Now as far as all the other safety systems, the A6 has an abundance available. Automatic forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection is always standard. Premium plus and up get auto high beams. And the driver's assistance package unlocks intersection assist, turn assist, and adaptive cruise assistant, which is basically a hands-on semi-autonomous driving system. These are very advanced safety systems, even if you do have to pay extra for most of them. And the last thing we'll look at on the outside is the pretty large 19.3 gallon fuel tank. This is good for 483 miles of range on premium unleaded fuel. But anyways, that's it for the outside. So now let's see if the cabin is more A8 than A4. So of course, as you would expect, you do have standard smart entry, and the A6 comes with Audi's newest key fob, which has been slimmed down just a little bit. Now to get inside the vehicle, of course, there is a sensor behind the door handle, so all you have to do is grab it. All right, so checking out the interior of the all new A6. As you can tell right off the bat, there's actually not a lot of differences from the A8, which of course is significantly more expensive. Like that model, you've got a ton of different choices as far as your interior combinations. 
So all models start off with a standard premium leather. However, if you go for the optional seating package, you will get the upgraded Valcona leather. As far as your color options, there are four color options. This is your standard black. There is also a Siega beige, an Okapi brown, and then a Sarder brown. And then turning over here to your door trim, it is beautifully finished. You've got a soft touch plastic here with stitching for the armrest. It would be leather if you have the seating contour package. And then up top, you've got some more really soft plastic, as well as some beautiful open pour wood and a big piece of aluminum straight through here. You also have two pairs of memory seating on premium plus and up. And all four of your windows are one touch automatic with really nice aluminum switch gear. Now coming over here to your seat, the standard seat on the A6 is 12-way power adjusting with four-way lumbar support. However, once again, if you got that optional seating contour package, it would be massaging as well. This, of course, is the standard grade of leather, but it still feels really soft. It has a very attractive stitching design and some color contrast stitching on the outside edges. So just like the A8, the A6 has a visually stunning cabin, and that is backed up by wonderful quality materials. Across all of your upper dash, you have a soft touch plastic on this model with stitching. However, this can be replaced by leather with the extended leather group. And then down below, you've got some really generous use of beautiful open port wood. Through the center is your piano black trim. And then down below here, you actually have something I like a lot better than in the A8, and that's the fact that you have open pour wood through here instead of piano black trim. And then finally to wrap things up, you've got a leather wrap piece right through here to have something soft for your knee to rest against. So overall, just phenomenal materials and phenomenal build quality. Of course, all models do have push button start, so just press this metal button to go. Now after you press that, you will notice our new MMI touch response system boots up. This is a 10.1 inch main display on Premium Plus and Prestige, or it is shrunk to 8.8 .8 inches if you go for the base premium. Down below that, you've got your secondary display, and this is 8.6 inches no matter what. Of course, what you're looking at is Virtual Cockpit, and this is standard on Premium Plus and Prestige. Now, this is a slightly upgraded version 2.0 that you see in a lot of the latest Audis, and it's got slightly different graphics and improved performance. But you've got the same functionality, so you've still got your stuff, like most impressively, your Google Earth Maps. Still looks stunning, and still none of the rivals have anything that's like this. Coming back to the steering wheel, the steering is electric power assisted, and all models come with this thin rimmed leather wrap steering wheel. Up top here, you've got your virtual cockpit buttons finished in piano black. And then over here, you've got your standard phone and voice and audio controls. You will notice that rain sensing wipers are standard across all the trims, as are your paddle shifters. And then moving down to this, we have the driver's assistance package, so we have all the full functionalities, including adaptive cruise control. Finally, the wheel itself is power adjusting, but to get heating, you will have to opt for the cold weather package. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about storage, where the A6 fares decently. Turning over here to your center console, it does have a reasonable amount of space. Um, this top part is a wireless phone charger, so you can just set your phone there like that. 
And then you've got another little compartment over here, nicely felt lined. Uh, additionally, you do have two charging USB ports, as well as illumination. The one thing I really like about Audis that most arrivals don't have is that this is fully adjustable. So you can bring it up and it locks into place. And additionally, it does also slide forward if you're a shorter person. Up in front of that, you've got two cup holders and a 12 volt outlet, but there's really no other place to set things. Now one way Audi did save some space was by going by with this electronic shifter and it works perfectly with this touch screen, gives you a place to rest your hand. Now to get in a drive, you just pull back and then you can bump over here to the right to shift manually here or via the standard paddle shifters. To go into reverse, you just click the button on the side and push all the way up. Now once we get into reverse, you will see a really nice 360 degree camera system fire up on the Premium Plus and Prestige. This is the same system that I looked at in the A8 and Q8, and what's really special about it is that in the main view, the camera actually turns with your trajectory, so that's really cool. Plus, of course, you've got your 360 view over here, but you can click 3D, and this brings you into the mode where you can pan all around the entire vehicle as if you were in like a drone or something looking at the car. Really handy. This basically just makes sure that no matter what situation you're in parking, you're going to have a view that shows you what you need to know. And then for park, you just press this metal button here. Now we'll also point out that uh, since we do have the advanced auto start stop system, is that instead of idling, a lot of times, like just now, the vehicle has shut off. So, um, you know, that saves gas as well. Additionally, back behind the shifter, you do have an electronic parking brake. Now, moving on up here, let's go ahead and sample the audio system. On this particular model, being the Premium Plus, we have the Bang & Olufsen 3D audio system, 705 watts and 16 speakers. However, if you go up to the Prestige, you have the option of getting an 1820 watt, 19 speaker Bang & Olsen Advanced 3D sound system. I believe it's the same one from the A8, and for that's optional for several thousand dollars. But anyways, let's go ahead and sample this one. this system I really can't imagine there would be anybody that needs an upgrade from this sound quality is phenomenal but anyways moving past that uh, you do have your parking sensor button here as well as a variety of different touch sensitive buttons on this panel so going through a few of them this is where you change your drive modes so if we click X here on the camera we can cycle through our drive modes you do have three, as well as an individual mode where you can take aspects of each of them and mix and match them however you prefer. You've also got your traction control button as well as your defrost button. Now of course the main function of this screen is for your climate controls. So to power this on, all you have to do is just press anywhere on the screen here. And this will bring up all of your menus. Now most of the models do come with a three zone climate setup. The Prestige comes standard with four zones. And this Premium Plus, since we have the warm weather package, also has four zones. Now, as with the other Audis, this is a really uh, cool setup. It gives you functions like being able to just swipe up and down to quickly change your temperature controls. Uh, you can change your zones right over here, turn on and off. You get your fan speeds. And then you can hit this to come up with any additional functions that you may have. 
On this model we have the heated steering wheel and the cold weather package and it has a dedicated button right here as well as our three-stage heated and three-stage ventilated seats. Now I will point out, um, unlike the Q8 and A8 I've been in earlier, um, neither of these two screens have the touch capacitive haptic feedback. So this is very much like a traditional touch screen. When you touch, it does respond. There's, uh, you don't have to have that extra press into the screen like you do on those two vehicles. Additionally, across the top here, you've got a variety of different buttons for your auto start stop, traction control, uh, home remotes. Uh, this button here is for the rear screen here. That's also part of the warm weather package. But anyways, that pretty much brings us up here to the main MMI touch display. So let's go ahead and talk about a few of the main features. All right, so getting into your brand new MMI touch response system. This, of course, is totally different than what you find in the outgoing A6. Since we now have a touch screen where we previously could only use like a wheel or whatever to control the system. Now Audi brags about making this system very tablet-like and I will agree with them. It is simple to get used to. It kind of reminds me of an Android tablet. So here on your uh, main screen you've got your applications conveniently laid out. And then you have some shortcut buttons that go along the side here. So we'll go ahead and start off with our media. As you can see right now, I've got my Bluetooth audio playing. And then I can control it right here with playing and pausing, skipping, as well as changing to different sources right here. Heading into navigation, this is, of course, an Audi staple having your full Google Earth maps. They look beautiful on this main display as they do on the virtual cockpit. As you can see, you've got the full control, including the tilt and 3D buildings. Now when you go to actually set a destination, um, one thing that's really cool is that when you search, you've got your full keyboard, it comes up down here on your bottom display, and as I showed in your previous Audis, you can also um, hand write the numbers and letters to spell Three, out things one, in a quicker zero, zero. way. H -E -N. Of course, you do also have your phone applications on board, so you've got both Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. And for the Apple CarPlay, it is worth noting it is wireless Apple CarPlay, so not very many brands offer that, and that's uh, pretty nice to have. But honestly, there's like a million different features of this system. I'm not going to have time to go through all of them right now. However, we do have a dedicated tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more. A link to that is in the video description. Moving on up, all models do come with an auto dimming mirror with built-in compass. And you will also notice that we have a standard moonroof across all models. Now this is not quite panoramic, but it's also not quite the normal moonroof. It's got an extra couple inches and it does open up nice and big. But overall, the cabin of the A6 is phenomenal. You have world-class materials in here, world-class technology, and really it's just beautiful to look at. There's honestly very little difference between this and the A8. There's even some elements like the open pore wood down here that I like more than the A8. So overall, I think Audi has done a phenomenal job here. But anyways, I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason, who will finish up the rest of the cabin. Alright, so in the back of the all-new 2019 Audi A6, you're going to find a large amount of space. You'll find 37.4 inches of rear leg room and 38.2 inches of rear headroom. That does actually make it the largest among all of its German rivals, like the Mercedes E-Class and BMW 5 Series. And turning over to the door trim, it is really nicely appointed. You do have a leather armrest, as you would expect. It's leather above that. 
and it does even carry the stitching to the very top. You do also have some silver trim, some beautiful wood, and with the warm weather package on Premium Plus, you will find these rear window sunshades. Now the seat itself is a gorgeous design. It's perforated and has contrast stitching. Now, as you would expect out of a luxury vehicle, it does have these rear vents on all models, and you will also find tri-zone climate standard across all trims. However, this Premium Plus has opted for the warm weather package, which throws in four-zone climate, which would also be standard on the Prestige trim. Now, temperature adjustment itself is actually really easy. It's the same setup that's found in the Audi Q8. So all you have to do is swipe up and down for temperature adjustment. It's very fast and responsive and you do have controls for your zones, as well as your fan speed. Now, in addition to that, we do also have three-stage heated rear seats, which are included in the cold weather package. Now, down below that, we do have two USB ports, which is a nice touch, as well as a 12-volt outlet. Now, in the center, you do have a nice armrest. It does fold down, it's leather wrapped. You do have some storage that is felt lined, and in the end, you do have some pop-out cup holders. Now you will notice we do also have a power rear sunshade, some LED lighting up top, a nice headliner, as well as an assist grip and coat hook. Now like I mentioned before, this is the biggest offering in the class among its German rivals. So you will find probably about, I don't know, that's probably about a foot of leg room, and Audi was nice enough to include knee cutouts. In addition to that, my feet are really comfortable. There's plenty of room for them. And sliding over, with the seat all the way back, and it does slide back a really long ways for reference. I still have several inches of leg room thanks to those new cutouts. Overall, I'm super impressed with this all new A6's rear seat. It's extremely comfortable and you have all of the luxury features and amenities that you could ever want. Now heading around to the trunk, like the A8, you do actually have a hands-free power option. However, this model does not have it. So just locate the button under the lid and it will open right up. Now inside the A6's trunk, you're gonna find another space where it's larger than some of the rivals. You'll find 13.7 cubic feet of space, which is actually larger than the A8 sedan, as well as the Mercedes E-Class. And as you can see, it's a very long trunk. It goes back quite a ways. It's also pretty deep. And you will notice that the seats do fold 60-40, or 40-20-40 split. In addition to that, you do have a little pub cubby over here with an outlet. And your hinges are covered so they don't crush your cargo. Under the floor, we do have a spare tire. And overall, this is a really nicely finished trunk. I do want to mention on the individual contour package, you would have power passenger memory as well. And of course your seat is power adjusting on the passenger side with the four-way power lumbar. Now in front of the passenger, you do have superb materials. So you have some more of that beautiful wood trim, a nice air vent, as well as a stitched dashboard, some Quattro branding, and down below that, you do have a nicely dampened glove box with a nice felt lining, and it's also very, very large. Now up top, we do have a nice sun visor with a mirror and light. Can also detach 
However, it cannot extend. But anyway, guys, that pretty much sums up all I'm going to talk about for the rear areas. So now let's go ahead and get to the powertrain and do a test drive. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the powertrains. Now starting out, this model has only one option, and that is a 3 liter turbo V6 making 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. That is the same engine that's in the A7, A6, uh, A8 as well. Now for now there is no base 2 liter turbo uh, 4 cylinder model like you have in the E class, 5 series and other competitors. Now the really neat thing about this is that this is your mild hybrid system. So you have a 48 volt starter generator and a lithium ion battery pack. Now it won't run in full hybrid power but it does give you advanced auto start stop so the engine can shut down while at idle and even while coasting. For your transmission you've got a 7 speed dual clutch automatic and it's paired with standard Quattro all-wheel drive. 0 60 is 5.1 seconds. Finally, to wrap things up with your fuel economy, you've got 22 city, 29 highway, 25 combined, which is better than the E300 despite that model having a four-cylinder. So the mild hybrid does uh, give you some better fuel economy. But anyways, let's go ahead and take it on a quick test drive and see how all this works together in practice. So initially taking off from that uh, stop sign there, under just partial throttle, this vehicle still feels really quick. Um, you know, like I mentioned, right now you're getting a, a higher amount of standard power. You're getting the V6 versus a four-cylinder. You're going to find in, uh, you know, your rival German vehicles um, as the base engine. So that's certainly helpful. definitely feels very quick on its feet. Um, this is the same engine you get in the bigger A8, but uh, we, you can definitely tell we've got less weight to move around here, uh, gets things underway uh, quicker. And just riding around in the passenger seat, you can tell just how more agile this is than, um, than the A8. I mean, obviously it doesn't really compete with that, but this is just a different type of vehicle with the same engine, and boy does it scoot. I never talk about the traffic sign recognition, but uh, I'm just now noticing it coming up on the virtual cockpit here. And uh, it registered that speed limit sign immediately, and that's a real nice benefit. It's reading the signs, it's telling you your uh, speed that you should be going and other things like that. So um, that's a, And that's a lot better a of a setup feature. than just having it integrated within the map because you have like construction zones and stuff like that right. that you don't always know exactly what speed you're supposed to be going exactly or if it's an up-to-date speed yeah so that to clarify that is reading the actual sign not just linked to, in your GPS I also want to talk about the steering. Uh, in your typical Audi fashion, it feels really good. It's super quick responding. Just slight turn off center, you get immediate response. And it feels really buttoned down. We're just in the normal mode right now. We'll try out the other modes here in a second. Um, but even in our comfort setting here, the steering is very fast and uh, you know, feels very buttoned down. Such a smooth acceleration. Let's 
All right, so I just changed the drive mode into dynamic and sport, so we'll see if that changes anything. Definitely holds your revs up uh, higher, gives you that more sporty sound and feel. Throttle response is a little bit more sensitive as well. And the steering I can definitely feel has tightened up. So you, the whole way through the cycle, you've got a, a tight turn. Now it is worth highlighting, this has your seven speed dual clutch automatic like the A4 versus the eight speed auto you find in A8 and uh, most of the other vehicles that share this powertrain. Um, you know, so that that's designed in itself just to be sportier, of course, and that gives you more of that kick um, when you're driving and whatnot. Yeah, it has like a, almost a whine too. Yeah, you can hear the turbo. Um, you know, yeah. These sports sedans do a really, really good job of, you know, if you want them to uh, be a sports car, you can make them a sports car, but uh, if you just want comfort, it's also a super comfortable car. You know, we haven't touched much on the fact that this car, if you just cruise down the highway or whatever, this is an extremely comfortable car. The seats are amazingly comfortable. You know, if you opt for the higher end trims, you could even be getting a massage in the process. And, you know, just, it's very quiet in here. It's very refined. You can tell that Audi has spent a lot of time making this car the best of both worlds. Yes, exactly. Overall, Light Mason said this. That's really what I would characterize this car as being. It's a vehicle that lives in two different worlds. You know, this is uh, in this class. You've got to be comfortable. You've got to be luxurious. But you also you got to play when the owner asks you to play. And this is a car that's comfortable with all those things. You've got a sporty dual clutch. You've got a good sounding engine. A lot of power when it's time to play around but then you can just kick it into normal mode, kick it into comfort, and you've got a smooth transmission, smooth ride, and then just a comfortable cruising vehicle. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this first in-depth look at the 2019 Audi A6 Premium Plus. Stay watching for a quick look at the pricing, and don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons below. We'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.